Welcome everyone to District Divided. We are officially on video with me, four new co-hosts. I got Matthew Regan, Mr. Michigan himself, right there. I got K-Dot, AKA Kadeen Wiggins over there. I got LC, the Argentinian sensation, and I got Spencer Brudig. We needed a white guy on the show, so here he is. <laughs> It's good to see you all, and we've got a great show lined up for you. We're going to be talking about Ryan Fitzpatrick going to the Washington football team. Big news. Is it a good move for our D.C. sports team, or is it not? And then we're going to also talk about it being a bit quiet with the Washington football team. There is a lot of hype built up, a lot of expectations built up for this team this offseason. Nothing's happened, but the New England Patriots of their own Boston have been doing a whole lot. So we're going to get into that. And then, of course, guys, it's March madness and i am hype and oregon's hype with the one seeded michigan wolverines georgetown hoyas over here they're making a run are they going even deeper we're going to talk all about it but again we are beginning with ryan fitzpatrick ryan fitz magic going to the washington football team one year estimated 10 million dollars could go up even more than that i'm going to send it to the resident expert over here kadeen what are your thoughts on the move all right, look. All right, I'm, I'm gonna let you finish. Oh, get the fuck! Right, but they're gonna, gonna be trash. Go on, Detroit Lions. <laughs> did you empty out your pockets to pay Jared Goff already? Um, look, at the end of the day, right, Washington. If I'm looking at it, where we're at in the draft position, right? We're not gonna draft any one of the high guys as far as the uh, as far as the quarterbacks go. So once you get up past that, you got to realize we got to find something as far as a quarterback that's not gonna make the mistakes or put us in a situation that's gonna take. It put us at a disadvantage of what the defense is doing. Ryan Fitzpatrick fits every mold there. And when you got the guy, the phenom and Taylor Heineke, that we're still wanting to see like what's going to happen with them. All you want is somebody in the, in, in, in the, in training camp that's going to push these guys to keep moving. Like I love this quarterback room. You saw it, Fitzpatrick, Heineke, and then we keep forgetting Kyle Allen's still around. Dude, and, how, how, how can you love this quarterback room? I love right? this like, quor- who is, what are the who options? is, who is elite, who is elite in this team? All right, number we don't one. Know yet. Hold on. There's not a lot of elite quarterbacks in the NFL, number one. Okay. Number number two is that if you're really looking around, what what are the other options? What Sam Darnold, Mitch Trubisky? Like, like, what do I, you I want us to uh, do? First of all, I, I know you love Sam Darnold. Okay. So, I so do. don't be acting actually. like you don't like Sam Darnold. I, I know want you all love of these guys. Sam Darnold. I'm all, I'm all here. <laughs> but uh Deshaun Watson's still out there. All right. And and if I'm if I'm if I'm a fan, I'm saying, listen, we have this elite defense, which you know elite units don't stick together that long. Like you have this elite unit. Eventually you have to pay guys. People leave. Like you're probably only going to be elite for they were elite last year. We'll probably be elite this year and we'll probably start to deteriorate as we go. Um, You kind of got to sell out, I think for, for Deshaun Watson this year. And the fact that we're talking about like Fitz magic league this team, I think he's fun. He's a fun guy. Ivy leaguer. Sure. That's great. Yeah. I thought he was really good last year, Um, but like you're not excited about (laughs) Ryan. I'm excited about Ryan Fitzpatrick. I'm legitimately excited about Ryan Fitzpatrick. And you should be, and here's why. Because the last three years, the man is the Benjamin Button of quarterbacks. He's finally figured it out. The last three years, QBR 61, then 68, then 76. He is figuring out the game of football at the age of 38 in front of all of us. And now he comes to Washington where he has a chance to work with Terry McLaurin. Free agency is still young. Let's see what we do at the wide receiver position and tight end position. Let's see. So, and he's got a great defense so that he doesn't have to do everything. Although we, oh, see, see, see that, will that, do that, that's he the thing. Do that's the, that's the thing is what? like, if you want a, a quarterback that just manages, you know, honestly, maybe Andy Dalton would have been the better option. No, he, no, he, no, he is, no, he is a game, he's a game manager. He's a game manager. Whereas like Fitz magic, as great as he is, he plays hero ball. And like, that's why you love him. That's why I almost would like him on the lions. Cause like we're a team that just like, needs just these heaves to get anywhere but like what i'm saying if, is, if you really need a game manager fits fits magic in your guy here's the thing what i'm saying is we can make up for the mistakes because our defense is that good and now we know we're definitely going to be putting up points should he win the starting job by the way this is still an open competition it's just right. a one-year deal they could right. still end up drafting somebody i personally do really like the quarterback room i think a lot of washington football fans do really like the quarterback room because of the high key performance Last season in the playoffs, Kyle Allen was sneaky good. Of course you want a guy like Deshaun Watson. Of course you want to trade those multiple first-round picks for a guy that's going to be elite for a decade plus. We would have loved that. But if the asking price was too high, Houston continues to say he's not available. This seems like probably the best option. And now we can say, hey, we figured out quarterback for the time being. 
let's move forward and address the other positions. And the, big, the bigger part of this is what you're looking at when it comes to the percentage of your salary that's dedicated to the quarterback position. And right now you've got three guys in this room where have all shown at least at a certain point in time flashes of something. And it's not necessarily, all right, these are world-beating Super Bowl MVP quarterbacks, but these are quarterbacks that can get the job done for you. And if you've got a defense in which you can still build on, maybe we put all the pieces of the team together so when we draft that young guy or have that young guy that can come in on that rookie deal, take it to into the promised land. But right now with the situation at hand, what are you going to do? Leverage everybody to go get Deshaun Watson? I mean, I'd probably still do that, but yeah, it's not, not, it's not, it's not available. And I'm not going to do the Russell Wilson bit because I still don't know what the hell is going on in Seattle. Like my top pick going into this year is far going into this offseason was Matt Stafford, which is probably my number one guy if we're looking at veteran quarterbacks that I thought could be a good bridge quarterback for this team. Because that's what I'm looking for, a bridge quarterback for this team. At least somebody in there if Heineke does not work out. Look, the numbers will tell you most likely Heineke won't work out. I like to think he would, but I also think that if you have that competition in that room, there's not going to be a lot of guys that are not as smart as Ryan the Fitzpatrick. Man, I, the I, man I, may work out, okay? I okay. get but Best, but you're right. best right. quarterback performance Kadeen, in nearly 14 Kadeen years. Kadeen is only start for Washington. I'm on the Heineke Hive. I am very much a part of it. But, His number one fan. I believe in the man. That's why I the, really like her quarterback. Look at group. the three guys, though. You get Kyle Allen, who's well-versed in Scott Turner's offense. You've got Ryan Fitzpatrick, one of the smartest quarterbacks in the league. And then you have a guy in Taylor Heineke. who is, he went is to that Harvard. true? He went to what? Harvard. <laughs> His wonder look was really <laughs> high, and he went to Harvard. I don't want to hear your shit, all right? Moving all on. Right, just, all know. right. Let, let, let me ask you this. All right, first of all, you, you know the saying. The original saying is if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. I don't even know what the saying is when you have three quarterbacks. Uh, do you guys think that w- what would you put percentages that that the Washington football team makes the playoffs next year? Make okay. So looking at the rest of the division, or actually, actually, right actually, actually, w- w- wins one playoff game, wins wins one, a playoff game, wins a playoff game next year. Okay, so first we have to make it. Then we got to win a game. Twenty percent. Twenty percent. Okay. So, you what actually, record do you need? You it's you have to win seven games. You right? just need the best record in the East, as we found out, which can be below five hundred if you really want it to be. That the is only, a trash. The only division. team in the East right now that you're worried about is Dallas with Dak coming back healthy. I mean, right. New York is still we don't know what the hell is going on there. But Philadelphia, the, they still haven't figured out what they're doing as far as quarterback. It still like seems like they're not sold on this young cat. And our defense yeah. stays the same, and it's elite. Honestly, right. it's and the baby I, Steelers right now. Getting uh, better. Matt okay. Ioannidis comes back. Now, let me ask better. a question. If, if Alex Smith would have taken a massive pay cut, would you still rather have Fitzmagic over him coming back? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And that's, that's just because, I mean, it, it don't – look, we love – I love Alex Smith. But you could still see he's not 100%. He just isn't. When you see him, you snap, he's just not there yet. Like, you can still see the I mental agree. aspects there, but he's it, not – he it, just can't perform the same it, way. It, it, I think it's telling that he hasn't signed – he hasn't signed anywhere yet, right? Right. Right. Yeah, yep. I, I, I think he, he will eventually sign, I think, somewhere. Um, I think he's, like, seems to be lining up to, like, be a long-term coach somewhere. But, um, I mean, I, I think he signed the way that Fitch Ma- Fitzmagic should be signed um, and just, like, that veteran presence. Granted, Ryan Fitzpatrick had a good year last year. Um, Very good but, year. Very but yeah, it's definitely time to move on from Alex Smith. I mean, he brings he brings uh, Fitzmagic brings swag. He brings incredible fashion. That yeah, beautiful, the beard, the huge sure. beard, Ooh, that the that chest beard. fro. Yeah, it's sensational. Like I, as, some, as someone who can not grow a beard, like that's something I'm really jealous of. That's I, something I will admire. Yeah, I, I, I think LC and Spencer made the two most valid points of why you bring it. Thank Fitz, you. Uh, wait, 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 wait. There's still one more. You guys yeah, are yeah. Totally, you don't bring him on to bring win games though. You are Don't. totally overlooking the fact that he is going to be the best fantasy player through week four. He'll get benched. He'll come back after the backup quarterback throws a bunch of picks, and then he'll have another two fantastic weeks of fantasy, and then he'll probably have an, an injury. I can't wait to have him and on my fantasy team. And he'll keep around 500 the whole time. <laughs> Terry Worst McLaurin case. is going to be a second Brandon round. Oh, dollar, bet, dollar bet, dollar bet, dollar bet, dollar bet time. Next year, who has more passing yards, Andy Dalton or Ryan Fitzpatrick? Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick for sure. I'm, I'm taking Andy Dalton. Dal- okay. I'm taking dollar. 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 Kadeen? Now, dollar. maybe we should explain. This is a new thing that we're bringing to this, right? What is the dollar bet on it? The dollar bet is plain and simple. You disagree on a hot take, on a hot button hot issue. It, it's a hot take. And you simply exchange money off of that. For example, the Georgetown Hoyas. 
we had a couple dollar bets last week when we were putting this all together where I said they would beat Marquette and probably beat Villanova as well. But we and um, it cleaned up. Cleaned it did. Up. It cleaned did. up. Did. Got yeah. to keep those Damn, from 7-Eleven. If there was a Taco Bell closer by, I definitely would have done Dude, that instead. I'd walk to your Chipotle burrito, man. That's yeah. great. I didn't make enough on the dollar bet to be able to do that. Just, just the guac. But just the guac. anyway, moving Hey, moving Wait. on. Actually, actually, before we move on, I might throw down another dollar bet. <laughs> no, okay. I would actually throw always up. interested in dollar bets just for those that are new. Uh, yeah, I, I think you can you can all, whenever you want you can stop the pod to throw on dollar bets. Uh, Washington football team win total over under seven and a half. Over, over. Okay, I'll take the under. Great, another dollar in because keep in mind <laughs> six of our games are against Dallas, Philly, New York. We're gonna get Dallas, four minutes. Dallas so much better than you guys. I, I have to say, what? Uh, yes, go ahead, Elsie. When you were talking about the East and you say Dallas, I, now I'm just confused, man. What the hell is going on? Yeah, uh, well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a bigger can of worms. Why the Dallas Cowboys are in the NFC East is a historical lesson, which actually makes no sense. But basically, they've had a longstanding rivalry with Washington. They wanted to keep it the same. Therefore, they're in the same division. Gotcha. Now, let's Fair. talk about the rest of free agency. Washington had a lot of cap room, more specifically the sixth most cap room in the NFL entering the start of free agency, but they've only made that one move, picking up Ryan Fitzpatrick to be included in the quarterback room with Taylor Heineke and Kyle Allen. Are you guys concerned or do you think, hey, this is totally fine? Like a couple different reporters have said, you know, we want wide receivers, but they've said the wide receiver market is really bad right now. People are getting overpaid and then others want too much money right now. Do we have a problem with how quiet it's been in Washington? Jerry's still out. Because, look, right now there's the – Washington has the rap of being the overspenders in free agency, but we haven't really been that in a decade, if you're you're really looking at it. We haven't done that in forever. But if you start hearing some of the stories that do come out, like last year they tried really hard to go get Amari Cooper. Didn't work out. So I don't know right now if it's a situation where they're just being very quiet as far as who it is they are targeting. Because even if I'm looking at the Ryan Fitzpatrick, like you heard Washington's name kind of come up in some of these quarterback conversations, and yet nothing really came to fruition. So I don't know if it's just they're not able to pull the trigger or get these moves off. But then there's some of these things where I'm like, I see the Ronald Darby. Ronald Darby goes and he signs with, um, I forget where he signed with, but he was a, he was a breakout star player for us last year. But even the contract that he just got, I wouldn't want to pay that if I was watching. Because I think that he outperformed his contract. You don't want to pay somebody over what it is the performance you're getting out of him. If I'm looking at free agency right now, yeah, there's some receipt. Allen Robinson was top guy on everybody's list. He's going back to Chicago. So now it's Curtis Samuel, somebody that's known inside Scott Turner's offense, maybe. But there's nobody really that stands yeah. up. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, did, did Detroit's entire wide receiver core. Kenny Galladay's available. Kenny Galladay's available. I, Marvin Jones went to Jacksonville. He, 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 He's going to Duval. Okay. That's, that's yeah. the jury that's out, is the whether or not we can – I think it's a failure this offseason if we don't have – a Galladay, I think right now you've got to say Galladay. If he's not on our team, I almost look at it as a minor failure. And he's rumored to be meeting with the New York Giants. But here's the thing. Again, the wide receiver market, there's a reason it's really bad. The class, the draft class this year is also loaded, just like last year's. Okay, so there is opportunity to be able to pick one up in the draft as well. I think it is affecting the current free agent market, and that's why you're not seeing a whole lot of movement. Washington's trying to be a bit more prudent, but they've also fumbled a little bit during this offseason. Again, they tagged Brandon Scherf for the second consecutive season, and now you're starting to see guards get paid an average value per year a little bit less than what Brandon Scherf should be making already. Instead, he's making $18 million for next year. So I do worry a little bit because of that as the context as to what the front office is doing so far. I don't know, man. And, and you guys still want over seven and a half? Yeah, I still want over seven okay. and a half because the defense is getting better. Just, There's some guys coming back. Just curious because we just did the free agent breakdown. I didn't even know that much detail, but now that I've heard it. Honestly, I think five and a half wins is probably oh, the where, where they could trade look, at. At the end, look, this defense is <laughs> still getting York, better as Billy. time goes on. Look, I put up against anybody. The Cam Curl was second best defensive rookie last year. Oh, yeah. Better than Jeremy Chen, who got all the props down in Carolina, but he was a better player than I thought in Cameron Curl. Um, Matt Ioannidis, I still think people are overlooking that name. He was the best thing on that defensive line when he was healthy. 
by far. And to say that it was by far with a defensive line that talented is insane to me. The only person that's coming back that I don't really miss is Landon Collins just because he doesn't really fit in what we're doing. But, like, I run it back with that exact same defense. Like, are there some pieces that I absolutely want in that defense to make it better? Yeah, but I'd run it back and be okay with it. The only posi- the only spot that I'm looking at that says we have to do something is pass catcher. Because you can't go into this season with just Terry and Logan. I, I, I don't it's understand how, how you're not saying quarterback in that. If, if, if you're saying this we team is – We right? just got the quarterback. The quarterback. You're calling Ryan Fitzpatrick the quarterback? The we just got quarterback. the quarterback. Here's the way I see it. Here's the way I see it. Just going back to quarterback real quick. Ryan Fitzpatrick is the bridge quarterback. We talked about wanting a bridge. That's a good bridge to have, okay? Again, he's been improving in the last three years and playing very, very well. Again, when you look at the various stats, fifth in QBR – you know, he didn't deserve season, to be benched playing, last year. When they benched they two, it came out of plan. nowhere. They just had the plan in place, and they just stuck with it, the buy move due to COVID. Simple as that. He should have continued to play. He's a solid bridge quarterback. For me, personally, I want to see what we have in Heineke. And if that doesn't work, and it probably won't. Look, realistically speaking, it like, probably won't. The, the, we the, may but, draft someone. But like the, the way you guys are describing it is like, this defense is complete. You know it's elite. You know this defense is elite. You know that you have a good... But if, Base I charge, offense. if I were in charge of the front office, I agree with you, Matt. I would have traded the farm for Deshaun Watson already. It wouldn't even be close. I would love to do that. But what I'm saying is for what we have right now as an option B, not only do I not hate it, I do like it. Because there are going to be quarterbacks next year that come in as well. And there could be one that the front office really likes. And they go, that's the reason we're not trading for Watson. Again, they have to. it's their job to make sure that they're looking at all the possible options. To me, not trading the farm for Deshaun means either, one, he's not available, and that's right now, I think eventually he will be, or two, that they have a plan and they know that they have a certain guy in mind. Whether that guy pans out, we'll see. I prefer the short thing in Deshaun Watson. Draft picks, you whiff on them all the damn time. I'd rather trade him, but here we are, and I'm okay with it. All right. I I, I like where I stand on my – I watched the football team bet. Well, clearly, you're just throwing out dollar bets all day. Where do you think Detroit <laughs> is right now? Uh, five and a half wins. Five and a half? All right, at least yeah. you're fairly realistic. I still yeah. think you're going too yeah. far. Go okay. under yeah. I mean, I mean I, five and a half, and we have a much better quarterback than you guys have. I think that was a sanity no, check by Gideon. Don't. Yeah, we did. Hold on, what? No, you Jared, don't. Jared Goff is a better quarterback than you guys have. Jared Goff is broken, and it's no traded. one knows. What? 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 They traded an additional first round pick just to move him. They wouldn't take him. And they were like, here's another first. They're like, fine, we'll take him. They didn't want Jared Goff. His I, contract's I, worth our entire offense. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, because they're eating it, but they're eating all of his contract. They're That's eating not 20 what you they're eating 20 say million about this your year. Guy. No, he's not huh? better. They're eating his contract. That's not what you want to say about the guy at the helm for you. That's I, I'm, just, not like, saying, that's I'm not saying I'm not saying first of all get out of it. First of all, I have no illusions of grandeur about my team. I said five and a half wins. I just think Jared that Goff to me is better like than your quarterback. Five, five and a half, and a half you wins. You're saying that you're pre- maybe four. You're you're saying <laughs> your team. Do you think your team right now? You're five and a half wins. You say that you got the under as far as seven and wins. Just straight up, who's winning more games next year, Detroit or Washington? I. Th- uh, it, the fact that you, 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 you I battle, can't believe you have to battle, think about it. You, you, you have to battle. The, you division. have to battle the division issues. But like, who do I think has a better division team? issues? That's six of your games. Which is a lot. Which is a lot. So that's two Green Bay, two Minnesota, and it sounds like you are somewhat lukewarm on the Andy Dalton. He loves Chicago. Andy Dalton, apparently. Loves Andy Dalton, <laughs> apparently. So that okay, six losses. I don't love Andy Dalton. Are you just like, find, yeah. Oh my something. god. I, I I just the amount of comments you guys have for the amount of me- mediocrity you have at the most important position is 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 ludicrous to me. So I, I yeah, I think the Lions are probably a touch worse than uh, Washington football team. I, I think we swap spots. I would probably play Washington football team and be six and a half. Yeah, um, a touch or, 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 sorry, I, I, I would put you at about, yeah, um, five and a half wins again. Anyway. anyway maybe, let's maybe, talk, six, let's maybe, maybe, about, maybe six and a half in our division. Yeah. Let's talk about, relatively speaking, let's talk about greener pastures in March Madness. The Michigan Wolverines are a one seed. Our resident, Mr. Michigan himself, Matt Regan, is pumped, wearing the hat, hype. Now, Isaiah Livers is out, and he's going to get into that a little bit. But we're also going to be talking about Georgetown. We're going to be talking about Maryland, your local sports teams. Let's begin, though, Matt, 
one seed in Michigan. Congratulations on an amazing regular season. Congratulations. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Winning the hardest division in basketball this year, the Big Ten. Uh, Illinois fans can go suck it. Um, but personally, I just want to say congrats to John Howard, first ever person to be a one seed as a player and as a coach. Um, so, you know, this team was running. Uh, this team was running real high when we recorded, probably like two weeks ago. That being said, um, had some stumbles. Some we've had stumbles. some stumbles. We've had some mega stumbles. Got smacked by Illinois. Illinois. Uh, Illinois. Their fans suck. Um, uh, lost to Michigan State. That game didn't even matter. We had already locked up the conference with that. And then we lost to Ohio State by a point in the tournament. So all this considered, like none of those wins to me are like that concerning. But losing Isaiah Livers or second leading scorer um, is, is big. Is big. Is big. So I don't think. I feel like, you know, I've watched a lot of the analysis shows and like they're basically saying Gonzaga, Baylor, and Illinois are, are making it to the bottom four and like Michigan's the week one seed, um, which I understand to some degree, but like no one is even picking us to make the final four anymore. It seems like I, 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 n- none of the major, major shows I watch had us making the final four. So with that, yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of disrespect. There's a little bit of disrespect right now thrown our way that I don't appreciate. Uh, we're still the best team in the country, for sure. And we're definitely going in. All these Final Fours. Kadeem, you need brag at health? Let me help you, number one. Michigan, better be your winning team. Kadeem, I that better be in three pools, Anything he way. said just now, like, as the guy who doesn't know, because my community college background just makes sure that I <laughs> don't know that much about March Madness, I will say, he convinced me none, but it might be that I'm still carrying a little bias because of his Lions bullshit, but I don't know. It just, it, when he when he says that his se- the second leading it. scorer is out, and he's yeah. the best team in the country. Wait, yeah. there's no confidence in that. He, he, he's, he's, not, he's not 100% confirmed out for the entire tournament. He has a stress... Injury, stress fracture. With his legs shattered. Is his leg is not He's got a shattered. broken foot. His foot is basically broken. There's different types Hello. of breaks. Like Wayne Rooney played in the World Cup Ooh. on a broken yeah, foot. And, and they didn't okay. win. Well, that's because it's fucking England. <laughs> One All could right. be the case. It's fucking Michigan. Here's the thing. <laughs> I want Michigan to do well. They do are the you? number one seed in the do East. You? I, well, Georgetown <laughs> happens to be in the same area. They do. They, do. The they are in the same region. Right. So Michigan, a one seed in the East. Georgetown, a 12 seed in the East. Maryland, a 10 seed in the East. It is a loaded and crazy bracket because Isaiah Livers is out. I do really like the Michigan team. I do. Overall, I think it's a solid squad, but missing your second leading scorer is huge especially at this time because you didn't have the time to adjust right and right, normally right. you'd get a month of games or two weeks even of games where all of a sudden you're in the big 10 tournament and you're going against ohio state and you're like oh by the way livers is out and you go Wait, yeah what? But, and, but also, also, and, uh, and they played well and they say this, yeah we, we, we lost by point they're a two seed um and honestly like uh we did drop a bad final play against them but um you know i i, I think that's a little bit of a sign that we went against a two seed like last minute, Isaiah Livers is out. Uh, last minute, he's out with a broken foot, which is like a weird kind of like way to put it. He's day to day with a broken foot, um, and then, you know we just showed up. The boys battled, and we lost by point. I think that we can adjust to it this week. Um, and I don't know. Right. I, I, I I still like. I don't think anyone is that good in our in our. If if we were fully healthy, we would run through this bracket, this region. But, but you can't describe also the the psychological aspect, like. Both for, for Michigan and then for like opponents, it's like, oh, now they don't have this, you know, the second lead score. Like now we feel more emboldened to play. Like there's such a, you know, number one seed carries so much, right? Like both in pressure and then in, in, in some cases, like it's kind of like in the NBA when somebody plays the, who, whichever team LeBron is in, they want to play their best game like every time. And I think the number one seed that happens as well, like everyone wants to play like, absolutely beat the number one seed, be the upset. And like, that's just, I think that's a lot of pressure. And like, now they, on top of that, have to adjust and everyone's just going to come out for blood against the number one seed on it in every region. But like Michigan now has the additional, like, yeah, they're the number one seed, but, and there's a but there. Michigan are incredibly, incredibly vulnerable. Now, real quick, I want to say Baylor might be more, more vulnerable because of a potential second round matchup 
just general stuff here with North Carolina. North Carolina seems to be peaking right now. That is actually a very, very scary matchup for Baylor. So I don't even know that Michigan will be the first team or first one seed out necessarily. I, I, I don't even think North Carolina is going to win their first game. You've got Big Ten bias. I North do. Carolina I do. I, and actually, I, I do think Wisconsin, Wisconsin for those that I, I, don't know. And I do think Wisconsin is trash. Like Michigan trashed them twice. Um, but I'll say this all the advanced numbers point as Wisconsin has a good team, right? They're number 10 on Ken Palm in the country and they're ranked nine seed. So I don't know. I think if anyone's under, under seeded, it would be probably Wisconsin. I don't really know why they're that high on Ken Palm. Personally, Michigan trashed them twice this year. Um, but. So, oh, so let's, let's talk about Ken Palm. Let's talk about Vegas. Let's talk about all this stuff. People don't really know when it comes to college basketball. Ken Palm, yes. Ken Palm, <laughs> yes. But when it comes to Vegas, when you see these lines, just a general heads up, they had Creighton favored by eight and a half against Georgetown. Your Georgetown Hoyas, your big <laughs> tell East me, tournament champions. Tell me and someone that doubts Vegas, and I'll they tell you someone that's broke. 31 right. <laughs> in the second half. Well, I, I, I'd I want to say, I mean, speaking of Creighton, I think you all are underestimating one of the great dark horses. Don't say UCSB. One of the <laughs> great dark horses. Let me Don't just tell you a UCSB. little bit about number 12, UC Don't Santa say. Barbara. <laughs> right? It might be three spots behind the University of Michigan in public school overall ratings, but at least you don't have to go to school in a frozen tundra. You can go to school where there's a beach, and it's amazing. Number 12, UCSB has not dropped a game since the turn of the new year, except one time on a back-to-back. They've only lost one game. <laughs> they did. One game in 2021. I think they are going to smoke number five, Creighton, and they are going all the way to the second round where they'll get crushed by whoever they play. But UC Santa Barbara upset alert over Number five, wow. Creighton. Take it to the bank. I, have, I have one wish. I have one wish, and it's that um, on the uh, on the south bracket, I just want to see Colgate play Oral Roberts. I think the <laughs> dentists are going to be real. The dentists. The dentists will love that. Sure. The right. dentist matchup is real. That would be such right. a good game. All right, Kadeen. <laughs> Kadeen, you, you, you are the college ba- basketball non-expert here. Yeah. Um, do you have – first of all, are you filling out a bracket here? Yeah. I just don't fill it, and, and you're filling out every year. I, <laughs> yeah. I I skipped I think last year, but I usually fill it out. I usually fill it out. You skip well, everyone. That's, skipped that's last a good thing that you skipped last year. Yeah, there was no <laughs> tournament last year. Well done. Oh, that's why I skipped it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who is in your final four? So I was spending some time um, looking at some of the other experts while I'm here on the phone, and uh, I just saw this guy, and I'm like, you know what? I kind of like the way this does because I was just looking for who got Georgetown going the furthest. Um, which is basically where, where I'm at because, like you know, you got it. You got it with a homer. Plus, look, they feel hot. And, like, they beat the shit out of Creighton. And I don't know I don't know about the matchup, but they beat the shit out of Creighton. Um, so, like, looking at it, right now I'm going Gonzaga, Georgetown, Baylor, and Illinois. You know, not a lot of surprise except for Georgetown see, going all the see, way. What did, I say, all the way. what did I say about the one seeds? It's all, all the one seeds are making. All the one seeds are shoons except for Michigan. A lot of disrespect. And, right and you're 100% you kind of right. In case the second <laughs> leading scorers got their feet broke. Like, um, yeah. kind of off. That it's makes a stress a factor. He's just stressed out. I'm this ain't Reagan. a Disney movie, okay? He's not, he's not coming back. <laughs> it's over. Oh, my this God. is going to be a Paul Pierce thing. They're going to wheel him back in, you know, yeah. and he's going to get out. I, I have a question for you Does both. Does he shat himself? What? Do we... <laughs> <laughs> do, do we... I, I do want to talk about the, the elephant in the room. Do we think that COVID will have any effect on this. Ooh. I mean, if one player that's tests positive, right, they're out. And that's yeah, the beauty of the Georgetown basketball program. They went through it already. They are battle tested. But do we they think that there's a realistic – the is there a realistic so, chance I think it that will one of these end up affecting, so, so, I think it will end up affecting one team, and I don't think it's going to be before these replacement teams can come in. So Louisville, Colorado State, I think uh, St. Louis. Duke has a potential? School, Duke, no. no, they are not no. one of the four replacements. Those teams will not get the chance because everyone right now is going to be totally fine before travel. They're going to be totally fine. They're not going to have any positive tests because of it. Now, there, you may see one in the round of 32, for example. Then it gets very, very interesting. I feel like given the number of teams that are there, and I think most of them, at the very least most of them, 
have not experienced any COVID issues, you could end up seeing one pop up. It is a crazy year. I would not be surprised if that happens. I don't know what the deal is. I suppose it would be the equivalent of a conference tournament where it's just a forfeit and that other team goes through, which once again favors Georgetown because battle tested, <laughs> turned the season around on their COVID outbreak as the elite teams do. So I think it's going to affect it. Matt, what do you think? Uh, I, I definitely think there's going to be teams. I mean, it's kind of a crazy plan that, and also, it's not it's not just one test positive and you're out. It's one test with COVID, with contact tracing to like your your players, and you have to have less than five players available. Um, Michigan also tested. They they set mm-hmm. off for twenty. They set off for twenty three days this year. Came back, smacked Wisconsin. Not a big deal. Um, but um, I, I do think it's going to be a little bit of a disaster. You have all these teams flying in. Um, getting tested probably right now. Yeah, is it a bubble? What are they doing? Are they trying to recreate? It's like, it, the, it's uh, a bubble. it's a bubble. Ball it's a bubble ish, which is so funny. They they're they're still student athletes, but they're also in a bubble. Uh, <laughs> but we, that's our different that's our different podcast on a different Correct. day. Correct. But um, yeah, they're all flying in. I mean, it, it's just kind of crazy that it's like they all got to get tested, and then is it really going to be a bubble? Because they're not really in one city, right? They're playing in West Lafayette. They're playing in Bloomington. They're playing in Indianapolis. Like. They're all in the state of Indiana, but it's not really a bubble to get between them. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be a bit of a – I think it's going to end up being, like, a bit of a disaster. And I wouldn't be shocked if more than four teams, like, can't play games. Matt, to that point, do we all think that the team that does, you know, get knocked out from COVID, is it going to be a star player that brings it in? Or is it going to be a bench warmer? And what happens to that guy that they contract yeah. back to? Do you make it public? I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, honestly. Do you think they, I mean, honestly, they hide it? No, no, no. Uh, no. I mean, you can't. Can. It's got to be, it's gotta be yeah, some yeah. arbitrary person but, that's like, he tested positive. I don't like, know, man, how much some, do you pay that pressure. guy to say it's negative? <laughs> oh, ungodly amounts uh, of money. I'm sure it's already it's, happened. Surely. It's, it's, it's yeah. already happened, okay? There's already been money that has exchanged hands in the sense of no public knowing that a test came back positive. Is that's it a unfair lot. if there's some states that are already, like, opening vaccines for, like, young people like you can get your team vaccinated other teams can't i I don't know if that affects the testing but like yeah well i mean i I, I don't know i I feel like you don't want your players vaccinated like the day before a game you know for sure yeah there's like secondary effects of it but yeah i mean you um, you get your second shot and and that's the thing georgetown doesn't need to worry about that they've got the antibodies we're good to go we're also (laughs) hot right now i i really Let's talk about Georgetown for a moment. Let's talk about Georgetown. About, let's talk about Georgetown. About Michigan. And, and let me just name some names for you. So let's begin with Jamarco Pickett, senior. Let's then talk about Javon Blair, senior. Let's talk about Tudier Belay, senior. Let's talk about Donald Carey, junior, junior, senior. <laughs> we have got an experienced group of guys, and Dante Harris, the freshman, was named most outstanding player in the Big East tournament. So the youngest one seems to be the top dog. I didn't even mention Kudus Wahab, who might be the best big man in the I have country. A question. We I'm... are hot, not taking questions at this time. <laughs> we are on fire right now. The Colorado <laughs> Buffaloes, I'm not concerned. They have no idea how to play. They got a guy named McKinley Wright. That's all I know. That's all you need to know, I guess. He's going to get 20 points. The Hoyas are going to steamroll. Florida State, I'm worried about in the round of 32. Matt, I am now taking questions. What was that question? All right. So, and I'm not that familiar with Big East basketball this year, but how many Should players be. on Georgetown were all Big East? We're all Big East zero. And that's okay. just the reality of us getting hot at the right time. Do you have another okay. question? Okay. So, okay. Is, so you're riding the hot team take, like oh, yeah. a la UConn. You another know, Big East team. 2010 or 2011, whatever year that was. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so, so, so th- that's the storyline you're going with. Okay, um, I totally agree. I mean, yeah, you guys, you're worried about but your first Is there time. a guy like Kemba on that team? Is there one player that's a takeover guy? Is there a one player? No, there are many, my friend. <laughs> we are a true <laughs> do, team. Kadeem, what do you all, want to say? Do all the Georgetown players have their feet intact? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, I, I, I feel good then, about then, that. Then, you feel so good about that Final Four pick. Oh, I feel good. <laughs> I, I, I do agree, though. I think Florida State is kind of – Nightmare matchup. They're – just I think Leonard Hamilton's a good coach. I mean, granted, we beat them when we went to the you know, NCAA finals in, oh, in 2018. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did beat God. them. 
Do you guys have reminded that we went to the NCAA Who finals cares? 2018? No. Uh, well, we're talking about the NCAA tournament, LC. All right. No. <laughs> um, so I do, I do think Florida State's a good team. I, I actually think the four seats are kind of like all of the underrated teams. Uh, in the Big Ten, for sure, Purdue was like – everyone's talking about Michigan, Illinois, Ohio State, Iowa. Purdue, definitely the – I would say the Big Ten team that no one is talking about. So, Kadeen, if, if I want to give you like a dark horse team to come out of that bracket – I would say I would say Purdue. Uh, I I think they are a sneaky just, sneaky good team. Yeah. I just read and I, I would say the same with UVA. Sports. I just read on CBS Sports, which is of course my number one pick for sports Gotta news. Be. Um, Gotta be. They host that, the tournament. Yeah, they they ran the simulation, which you know we all know is extremely accurate, especially in college basketball, which is so predictable. Um, and they had Georgetown with an upset win. Uh, making it pretty far in the tournament, so I, I, there's no there's no evidence against it. I think but that's. Would you I even think call it an upset? I think is the bigger question at this point. By seeding only. By, by seeding, seeding only. only, because yeah. this team is on a roll. If they met Michigan, which could potentially be a Sweet Sixteen could. matchup, I mean, you're without Isaiah yeah. Livers, and we're on a roll, baby. I oh no no, I would play be Michigan. He'll play would, with a stress hey, factor. Yeah, no, uh, I mean, I, yeah, wait, he'll roll out. Yeah, wait. Dollar bet, dollar bet. Um, yes. Colorado, Georgetown. Oh, come on. You got to go with Georgetown. I'm going to go dollar bet. Georgetown goes further than Michigan. I want that one. I want Ooh, that you my I want that action. Right, okay. <laughs> Easy. I'll, I'll do more than a dollar bet. Yeah. Put me oh, down wow. for $2. Put, Put me down for $2. $2. You think Georgetown goes further than Michigan? Yeah, let's get it. Let's yeah. get it. I, oh, by the way, because we're you the 12th seed, I get the push. How's okay. That? Yeah. 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 Okay. That's so fair. if it's round of thirty-two for both, I okay. win the bet. Okay. Wow. All right. I, 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 a dollar bet with dollar Amit bet. and dollar bet with Kadian. Okay. Can we do a dollar bet recap? Yes. Yes. Okay. We can. Okay. All so right. we have the dollar bet. Like bet. Andy money. Dalton more passing yards than Ryan Fitzpatrick. Kadeen and I side with Fitz Magic over here. You side with Andy Dalton. Then we have over under, I believe you said seven and a half wins for the yeah. Washington mm-hmm. football team. We both mm-hmm. went over, you went under. And then finally, we have the Georgetown, Michigan bet. We are a Michigan podcast. We are also a much, much bigger Georgetown podcast where if Georgetown advances to the same round or beyond Michigan, I win, Kadeen wins, Matt loses. Or if the one seed in Michigan Wolverines go further than 12 seed Georgetown in the East bracket, Matt wins. And, 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 I and for the record, I did try to attempt to do a UCSB advancing dollar bet, but it's so unimportant. No one took it. It's over. Yeah. No one can Wait. take it at this point. No one can take it at this point. It's over. Oh, I do so want to ask, okay, I do wanna ask for, our, for our bracket experts and for a bracket newbie like me, what is your go-to statistic when looking for pos- potential bracket busters? Is it field goals attempted? Is it three-point percentage? What's your go-to uh, bracket busting? I'm going to go ahead and take this one immediately. It's going to be three-pointers attempted as well as percentage. It's a combination of the two. If you're attempting 43s a game, but you're only hitting 25%, it's not worth it. You're just going to end up giving it away unless you have a tremendous front court where you can offensive rebound and create those second chances to be able to make it for me three pointers attempted as well as percentage a sneaky one that people don't really talk about or look at forcing turnovers opposing turnovers per game if you can force those and that's why real deep sleeper here real deep sleeper here and they track it real deep sleeper abilene christian Abilene Christian, okay. 14 seed. This is their second I, consecutive, right? We had the COVID break. Second it, consecutive year in the tournament. They got waxed by Kentucky in 2019. They played Texas, who just won the Big 12 championship. I think they may catch them sleeping. If you want value for money, look at the line. I don't know if they'll do it straight up. They may. They force 19 turnovers a game. Man, okay? Jesus. 19 turnovers a game. More recently, they've been winning on average by 27 points per game in their last three. But can they you are really blowing can, people out? Are they playing when a different opposition? Yeah. Yes. Yes, they yeah. are. Right. But winning is a habit. It's infectious and it's March. You never know when it comes to these things. When I look at the specific metrics, 
Abilene Christian is a bit of a darling to me. Dude, I, I need you to I'll make like me it. a statistical argument for why Colgate will play Oral Roberts. If you can just make I can't that, do that happen Sorry. somehow. Statistical, statistical argument, here we go. Uh, the model. Ohio State is ass. That's statistics <laughs> right there. Okay. Statistically, yeah. statistically your hat, speaking. Your hat just invalidates Statistically that speaking, right Ohio State is ass. And as a school, they're ass. Uh, okay. Arkansas football school. So who is the highest that's seeded that's going to for sure be out first? Way. Yeah, barely. Ooh, ooh. ooh what I what have, high seed? I, I think Iowa is going to be out early. I have Iowa really? in the final four. Yeah, and who is wow. the lowest seeded team? You have going the farthest. Oh, I like that. I like that question. Purdue. Well, Georgetown for Emma. Georgetown. Purdue. And Kadeem. <laughs> I, I, look, I, look, I'm a Georgetown homer. I love Georgetown. I don't see a way past Florida State unless Greensboro somehow pulls the upset. I think Florida State is designed to play a team like Georgetown. They're big on the interior, and they have a lottery pick. You know, top 10 pick at a guard. It's going to be next to impossible for Dante Harris. Should we be fortunate enough to get past Colorado? to have to guard him. So I think talent overtakes at that point. I do not have Georgetown. The team I actually like, it's in UCSB's uh, little group of four there. I like UCSB against Creighton because Creighton's reeling right now. They've had the controversy with uh, their coach, Greg McDermott, with the plantation comments. They're disjointed. They may get caught off guard. UCSB wins. I really like Ohio. Virginia is dealing with COVID like issues right now. They're like dealing def- with COVID like issues right now. And Virginia. Ohio... And Ohio, but they're also the team that lost to 16 seed UMBC. They're the only team, one seed in history, to lose to a 16 seed. Yeah, that was, and that so, was more years ago, they're still the defending champs. Trust me, they're the trust me. They're the whole they were also the luckiest the national holders. champions of all time. They should have gotten knocked out by Purdue if they called the double dribble on Ty Jerome. They're not champions against Auburn. This is Virginia, ultimately a nervous team that doesn't score a whole lot. Ohio, to me, can make a Sweet 16 run. But that's as far as it goes. 13 seed Ohio in the West bracket would then get steamrolled by Gonzaga. That's the furthest I have a team going, double digit. I always like Syracuse. You know, they're always, just a, Syracuse. They're always just a tough tourney out. You know, same with Michigan State. You can, you can make the same argument with Michigan State. I feel like when Izzo's teams are hyped up, they get knocked out by fucking Montana State. But when they're an 11 seed and they've struggled all year long, yeah. I, I could see them. I could see them making a bit of a run. I don't think Texas is that good. Um, albeit that I'm a rookie, I still think statistically it's more important to have players with intact feet than non-intact feet. So, oh yes, Saxa. Oh yes, Saxa, okay. baby. Okay. Okay. I mean. Okay. Elsie, what you got? I, I agree with Kadeen. I think number one uh, thing to do is not play with uh, broken foot, broken feet. I think if you can manage to do that, you have a good cho- a good chance. I do All like. Right. I have to. I have to go with you know. With Ohio, I'm going to agree with you, um, which as a foreigner, figuring out the differences between Ohio and then Ohio State and then the university I went to, which is Ohio West, there's just too much for me. I was like, I don't understand what's going on, but now I'm now I kind of get it. They, they, have they, they are close. That really they, helps. They, they are close schools, but it's important to know the main distinction is that Ohio State is ass. I so, see. And that's final, the way you've been losing, I guess. Okay. Final Ass. bit here. Final bit here. Ass. I want to know everybody. Everybody's final four. Oh, yeah. Matt, here we go. I'm beginning with you. What is your final four right now? Right now. And it can change, but right now. Yeah, yeah of course. Of course. Uh, come on, at least I got Michigan out of the Midwest. I have Illinois going out of the... Uh, what is this? Out of the South, I... I have Purdue and out of the West, I have Kansas going um, kind of my, I feel like no one's really talking about Kansas too much. Um, no, I, I think, I mean, again, I, I kind of have the, the, the counter argument where it's like Kansas is always hyped up. They're always at one, that two seed. They're kind of a sneaky three seed th- this year. Um, no one's really picking them. So I figure, you know, why not? I, I, I don't believe in Gonzaga. Um, so I'm going to say, I'm going to say Kansas. So uh, just to recap, Illinois, Purdue, Kansas, and Michigan. So three yes. Big Ten schools and yes. Kansas. Okay. Yes. I will go ahead and say that my final four, Iowa coming out of the West. Now, it's going to be a rematch with Gonzaga, and Gonzaga won the first time. But I, as college basketball fans know, November, you might as well call it a totally different season. 
I think Iowa is now much more prepared for that game. I think there's a lot of pressure on Gonzaga to go undefeated. Iowa. Now, looking at the South bracket, this is where it's intriguing for me. Baylor, North Carolina. North Carolina, in their last three games, averaging 18 offensive rebounds, just offensive rebounds per game. They have a number of five-star recruits that are starting to click. If Baylor gets past them, and I think they will, I have Baylor as my final four team from the South. Otherwise, it's Ohio State, the dreaded Ohio State. Then in the Midwest, I have Houston beating Illinois in the Elite Eight. So Houston in the final four. And then finally, Maddie, if LSU beats St. Bonaventure, and this is why I took the dollar bet. You have too many Michigan, ifs, man. I think Michigan loses. <laughs> I think Michigan, and LSU will beat St. Bonnie. Michigan loses in the round of 32 to LSU. I got UConn as of right now. I got UConn, the seven seed, beating Maryland. They, James Book Knight is a special oh, fuck guy. That. UConn as my fourth Final Four team. So to quickly recap, Iowa, UConn, Baylor, Houston, my Final Four. Kadeen, what you got? Uh, one last said, time. Yeah, one last time. Got it. Uh, Georgetown, Love Gonzaga, it. Baylor, Illinois. I like uh, feet, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Dean with the foot fetish picks. Uh, Elsie, what, Elsie, what do you have there? I'm going to give you each team and a reason for them. So Gonzaga, because they're the number one seed, right? I think Fair that's enough. just an easy choice for me. Uh, UMD, because of Go Terps. I'm a student. I'm a grad student there. I have to root for the team, and therefore I have to believe they're going to get to the Final Four. I have to. Colgate, because obvious. We need Colgate to get all the way. And then finally, Illinois, just to go against Matt. So that's, those are my Final Four. Okay. Spencer, wrap it up for us, baby. You know, in the West, um, I am going <laughs> Iowa. Um, I think that uh, they're looking nice. Although, if Iowa does not win in the West, then it is going to be UCSB. Um, for my South pick, I am going with Purdue. Mm, no, I'm going to go with Baylor for my South pick. Uh, for my Midwest, I'm going San Diego State. Ooh. San Diego State. That means beating Syracuse right now. Okay. Yes. Love and then it. for my East pick, I'm going Colorado. You asshole. You absolute <laughs> asshole. For those that don't know, Colorado played Georgetown round one. Spencer with his straight face knows exactly what he's I like doing. How, I like how Spencer is an asshole for picking a five seed over a 12 seed. <laughs> But he's not an asshole for, for picking more a 12 seed over a 1 seed. More specifically, beating the 12 seed at Georgetown Hoyas, which makes no sense to me. It makes no sense to anybody. If right? That being said, if it's not them, then it will be Georgetown. So whoever, <laughs> whoever, whoever wins that game, of Colorado, no I feel we'll like go all the way. I feel a whole lot better now. Anyway. Mm. Who do you have winning? Who, who do you have all winning? We got to have Final Four. Baylor. I have Baylor game. as of right now. I'm going Baylor. Baylor with significantly the best three-point percentage in all of college basketball. You did your research. I'm proud of you, Spencer. That is correct at 42%. But trash defense. But trash defense. They don't need it because they end up scoring around 90 a game. Just score more points. I don't see what the problem is. Baylor does Use it. all your available feet and score more points. Regan, national champion. Of course. Okay, cool. Kadeen, what you got? <laughs> George Shannon, Patrick Ewing flips James Dolan the bird as he lifts the championship. Show. Love this idea. Elsie? Colgate. I think Gonzaga beats Colgate in the final. Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> if that happens, by the way, this better if be. If that up. happens, this dude, is being I, shared if, every if single day. That has day. to get me a job. If I, if I, if I get <laughs> that, I mean. If that happens, <laughs> the rest of us have to brush our teeth for one hour straight. If that happens, we each give you 100 bucks. I think that's fair to say. Like okay. minimum. Colgate <laughs> in the final. It then has to lose because then there's the risk they could beat Gonzaga. No, no, no. Because at that point, Gonzaga doesn't want to see no, Colgate. No, no. no one I wants need, to see Colgate. I need a, a Cinderella story that ends in heartbreak. I don't like when movies are too nice. <laughs> that that, that, that glass video. slipper is going to just shatter their yeah. feet. If right? Elsie like, ever permission. writes a story, just don't watch it if you don't have a strong heart. My God. This no, dude needs I, a Cinderella. Need just gets for, my fi- for all you math people, for my final contribution to this week's podcast, does anybody know what chance you have of making a perfect bracket oh shit no googling wait what does oh, the, oh, do, that changes so, so you have 68 teams yeah so, so do, do you have to pick the uh do you have to pick the first four do you have to pick that correctly or are you just you have to pick every single correct victor yeah the whole bracket yep 
what is it? One over sixty-seven times two. But it, it's not. It's not really no. two. It's not really one over two to the sixty-seventh. It's one in nine quintillion. Jesus, what? Which probably is one over two to the sixty-seventh. That's why they. That's why they offer you millions of dollars if you get. But it's not. It's weighted. It's not right. gonna happen. Yeah. They had that dude. I think just a couple of years ago. That was forty-nine to forty-nine. He didn't even win his bracket pool, by the way. It was a sense. great start, but yeah, he, I mean, he got so much sense. wrong in the Elite Eight and Final Four that, yes, yeah, yeah, someone else ended up winning. Um, so get that. So, yeah, that's going to conclude it this week. At District Divided, your DC Sports podcast, where we cover the best DMV in the country, specifically the sports department. I'm Amit Singh. That's Matt Regan, Kadeen Wiggins, LC, Spencer Bruda. You're going to hear much more from us weekly. Love to all of you. Best of luck with your brackets, and we will see you all next week. Take it. Oh, yeah, Saxon. Oh, yeah, Saxon, baby. Go Colgate.